I'm Peter Block at ACC 2019 in New Orleans. With me on my left is Renato Lopez uh, from Duke, and he has done the Augustus trial. Now, the Augustus trial, uh, I hate to say it, but it is a game changer for the way we take care of clinical patients. And I'm not going to take away any wind out of his sails. So uh, tell me what this uh, trial was, Renato, and then we'll talk about what it really means. Sure, Peter. So the Augustus trial really tried to answer two questions in a population that is a high-risk group, which is patients with atrial fibrillation and a recent acute coronary syndrome or uh, PCI. And basically, we wanted to answer, is apixaban safer than VKA in patients that are already taking a P2I12 inhibitor? So the P2I12 inhibitor was the background therapy. Okay, so everybody gets... Uh, clopidogrel. Clopidogrel. Or, or any other P2I12 yeah, inhibitor, understood. but it yeah. was... Uh, clopidogrel in 93% of the patients. So okay. basically, uh, clopidogrel was the main P2I12 inhibitor of choice. And then we first randomized patients to a Pixaban or VKA. So that was the first part of the trial. But because it was a two by two factorial design, we also have a second randomization factor, which was aspirin versus placebo. And the idea behind that was to try to assess also how important aspirin is or is not in the regimens uh, when treating these patients in terms of antitraumatic therapy. How much aspirin did you put them on? Did you put them on... Uh, 81 80? milligrams. So not very much aspirin. Low-dose aspirin. Okay. So what did you find? Short so version. So we found that apixaban uh, was much better for bleeding with a 31% reduction in bleeding and in hospitalizations uh, compared to VKA and no difference in ischemic events. And on the aspirin side, we found that adding aspirin increased the risk of bleeding by 89% and... Uh, we did not find any significant difference in hospitalizations and we did not find any significant difference in ischemic events. So those were the summary of the two comparisons that we did. Okay, so Renato, we've, for the last, I don't know, maybe five years, have been discussing this issue of whether NOACs would be good in atrial fibrillation, particularly from my point of view as an interventional cardiologist, after a stent, what do I do with somebody in AF? So what are you going to tell the folks out there we now need to change completely in terms of triple therapy? Triple therapy is gone, right? I think triple therapy is going to be for really reserved situations. I think the routine now, should, the, the standard of care should be a NOAC. I think we have no questions anymore uh, because even guidelines, the AFib guidelines, have a preferred recommendation for NOACs instead of VKAs. Right. So I think now we have confidence in using NOACs in those uh, patients. And I think a NOAC plus a P2I12 inhibitor might be enough for most patients. We might not need aspirin. In other words, less might be more in this clinical setting. Okay, and I would agree with you totally. Looking at the data, the addition of aspirin, I think the risk of bleeding sort of overcomes the benefit you get out of aspirin. That's correct. So for anyone that's got uh, patients with atrial fibrillation out there, particularly after stenting and if they have an ACS and they need something, Go with a NOAC, go with a clopidogrel, and you're probably going to do enough for your patient. I think, I think that's correct. And of course, if aspirin might be needed, we might be able to identify with further analysis. But the important also message is that if you want to use aspirin for any reason, no question that it should be on the, with a NOAC and not with VKA. There you go. Thank you very much, Renata. Thank you.